Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I'm going to be showcasing the new items in Final Fantasy XV that came with the recent downloadable content, Holiday Pack. We're going to be going over the items from both Holiday Pack and Holiday Pack Plus, and hopefully answering all of your questions regarding how to get these items, how these items actually work, and when is a good time to use them. Now, before we go any further, before I even show you the items, I want to show you how to actually get the Holiday Pack stuff. So we're going to back out into the dashboard. Once you've got the update 1.03 and you've and you know and at this point holiday pack is out for everybody so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's out in your region go to final fantasy 15 on your dashboard and press down right it'll take you to this menu go all the way to where it says playstation store go to add-ons and it'll give you the option to install the holiday pack and the holiday pack plus once this little part says installed right here, you're good to go. Restart Final Fantasy 15, and when you load up your save file, the items should be in your inventory. Now, I haven't actually loaded into this save file and actually looked for them yet, but I've heard that sometimes they're scattered all over the place inside of your inventory. So that's the number one question I've gotten is, I, I don't know how to get my holiday pack items. That's how. So, with that out of the way, let's actually go into the items. So we're going to cover the free holiday pack items first. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, they're going to be all over the place, aren't they? Here they are. They're just randomly in the middle. Maybe if we sort, it'll put them all together in one place, like at the bottom or something. Yep, okay. So uh, let's do this little by little. Now I'm going to be warping around the items a little bit here, so just bear with me. The Nixperience Band. This is the first uh, item from the free holiday pack. This prevents experience points from being tallied when you camp or when you go to hotels or at the end of a chapter or at any point. But it is an accessory that needs to be equipped. The good news is the Nixperience Band does not need to be equipped by Noctis. So if you have a party member that, you know, you don't really care about and you just want them to, uh, to hold on to your Nixperience Band for you, you can equip it to them. Warning though, while you're going through the story, don't forget that sometimes party members, they like to go off and do their own thing. Make sure if that happens, especially at a certain event in Chapter 9, that you re-equip the Nixperience Band to Noctis to ensure that you never accrue experience points if you're going for something like a level 1 run. You can also use the Nixperience Band to pool experience points and save them for Altissia in Chapter 9. Now what I mean by that is you still gain experience points with the Nixperience Band equipped, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, the thing is, they will not be tallied when you rest. So you could technically use it to save up experience points. And I know I'm not using the shield. Before anybody says, Happy, why are you doing that? Not using the shield. Whatever, no one cares. This isn't even the good spot. So I, as you can see, I got experience points from that fight, even though Prompto had the experience band on. The difference is, and I'll show this at the end of the video, if I go to camp at the nearby camp over there, you can see it, that won't actually tally. Even though I'm at max level, it doesn't matter. It won't actually tally. So, uh, the next item we have to move on to from the free one is the Warrior's Fanfare. So the Warrior's Fanfare gives you AP at the end of a battle if you get an A plus in the offense section outside of training. It doesn't work in training. So basically, we're going to equip that. And again, that's an item you can equip to any of your party members. It doesn't need to be equipped to Noctis, so keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to summon some enemies real quick here. I really should just equip the shield. Do I have the shield equipped? Scepter, sword, bow? No, I do not. All right, whatever. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to complete this fight real quick. And at the end of the fight, I got one bonus AP right there at the top for getting an A plus in offense. Now, uh, those are unfortunately all the items from the free pack. I know you guys are wondering about the Choco Mog shirt and the Carnival Passport. The Choco Mog shirt will not actually be available until the Chocobo Moogle Carnival in January, which is a limited time special event that they're holding at that time. Uh, speaking of which, the Carnival Passport should be available here. Free Carnival Passport and Carnival Passport. So we've been assured that the Carnival Passport and the Free Carnival Passport, one of the Free Carnival Passport is the one that comes with the uh, Holiday Pack Free version, that they are functionally similar. However, the fact that they're named differently and the fact that I have two of them, it makes me just a, a little bit curious as to if that's actually true, if there's not an actual difference between the Carnival and the Free Carnival Passport, but they were told that they are functionally similar. So until proven otherwise, that's it. That'll be your ticket into the Carnival come January. So it's just in your key items, hold on to it. So next we're going to be moving into the items that come exclusively for Season Pass holders. This is in the Holiday Pack Plus, and these items are a lot like some of the items we just got, but there's also some crazy good ones that, again, we can equip to party members. So let's start with the ones that can be equipped to party members. You have the Blitzer's Fanfare and the Tactician's Fanfare. Blitzer's Fanfare gives you two AP every time 
you get an A plus in time outside of training. Just to show you, I will quickly do another fight. You saw that I got one AP from just using the the Warriors fanfare. Now you'll see what I get from using both the Warrior and the Blitzers fanfare. As long as I get an A plus in time, which let's be honest, if I don't, that's the more embarrassing part considering what I'm up against. I got a bonus 3 AP at the end of that fight because I got an A plus in both of them. The last one, which I'm sure you guys are already know where this is going, is the Tactician's Fanfare. And this is for getting an A plus in Finesse. Just to be clear, getting Finesse requires you to do things like QTE blocks and parries and link strikes and blindside strikes. So if you're not doing a lot of that in fights, you'll probably not want to equip this one. I don't even know how much AP it gives, if it gives one, two, or three AP, but it'll basically do the same thing. It'll give you bonus AP if you get an A plus in finesse outside of training. If you want to test it, you can always do some of the high level hunts that have a lot of QTEs, especially against the samurai type mobs. Those are really good for getting an A plus in finesse. Now we also have the key of prosperity, a lucky charm that increases the drop rate of at which fallen foes leave behind items of value. Uh, now I haven't tested to see what the exact increase in the drop rate is, if it's equivalent to the papa bird uh, bowl or if it's equivalent to the uh, mother child, uh, the mother and child rice bowl. But it basically increases drop rates, so it's effective for pretty much most of the game, uh, especially for some of the rare items. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is, of course, the Ultima Blade item, the Sturdy Helix Horn. On top of stacking that with the foods that increase drop rates, then it should make things a lot easier for you. Um, again, it doesn't need to be equipped to Noctis, so it's a great item to just have on one of your side party members just to make your playthrough a little bit smoother. I've been using it a lot on my level 1 playthrough. Um, keep in mind, Kia Prosperity does not, it does not increase the drop rate of the Magitek V2. Nothing increases the drop rate of the Magitek V2. I covered that in my guide on how to farm the Magitek V2. Now, the remaining items can only... Actually, no, there's one more. The Ring of Resistance. So the Ring of Resistance makes it so that your party members are invulnerable, or as it says, resistant. It says impervious, actually, on the item, to magical friendly fire. Now, this means that you can cast spells without destroying your party members in half a second. To be clear, though, while that's been working, I've noticed that the initial spells are not killing my teammates. It looks like the field that it leaves behind might still be damaging them. So casting a Thundaga for 600 potency a tick uh, with the AoE effect on the ground is probably still going to do a lot of damage to your teammates. But again, you can equip it to other party members other than Noctis, so I, it actually ends up being a very useful item. The remaining items, in fact, let's, why don't I show that off? Uh, I guess there's no real reason not to show that off. I can't really show off the Key of Prosperity, but I can show this off. Uh, let's see, Noctis. Uh, I've got magic somewhere. Something big. Tricast Firaga, I guess. It's not exactly the best enemies. Maybe I should go to it against. Is Bandersnatch over here? Oh, hey, the Bandersnatch is here. We'll use him. Uh, he's, he's weak to lightning, so this is probably a good example. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. All right, let me wait for my teammates to get in range of it. Teammates, get in range of it. Come on. Come on. Farag's got a pretty big AoE, but still. I want you to directly see how it doesn't... Oh, he's pretty close. So, well, I mean, I think he would have been hit by that. But uh, you can see that they're still taking the fire damage over time. Although I can't tell if it's because of the ring, but it looks like they're not really taking much damage. In fact, look how much damage Noctis is taking from it. Uh, Noctis isn't taking much either, so I guess it's a poor example. Let me see if I can do it again now that they're all kind of in melee range of him. Might work a little bit better as an example if I just do it one more time so you can see that they're not getting decimated. Yeah, you can see they didn't take any damage from that big spell right there. So uh, yeah, that's the Ring of Resistance. Uh, it works very, very efficiently, as you can see. So uh, go ahead, use it. Plenty. Now, uh, the remaining items that I want to talk about, I'm actually going to talk about them on the run, and I'll show them when we actually get back to where that enemy pack was. But uh, the remaining items, we have the Tech Turbocharger and the Armager uh, Accelerator. So what these actually do is these speed up one of your resources while completely halting the progress of another. In the case of the Tech Turbocharger, which I believe I'm in the right spot now so I can show you, uh, this accelerates the tech bar replenishment rate, but freezes the armager. And then the armager does the opposite, which uh, accelerates armager, but then freezes the tech bar. I don't know what happens when you equip both of them, but I guess we could try to find out. So, uh, here we go. We have the accelerator for this one. I'm going to try to summon enemies and then just, like, kite them around and hope my teammates don't instantly kill them. If not, you may see me edit this to where I teleport to someplace that's uh, a little bit easier to do this in. So... 
you well armature was a, a bad choice i'm just gonna run away and uh let the bar disappear so we can get an idea of what the replenishment rate looks like we're gonna show what it looks like with we're gonna show what it looks like with out the bar and then with the bar all right so it's empty now unfortunately it's not the greatest example because yeah keep in mind you're not you're still not generating constantly for the armager you're still you still have to hit enemies or dodge attacks or things like that so i like how that wasn't warranted to an a plus in time so it's still not super crazy i personally like the tech one a little bit better there we go so you can see one dodge was that much this is with the bar so that was two dodges let me see if i can get a third one three come on swing swing me one more time before prompto just shoots you in the face or something or gladio does that so that's what it looked like with three now let's unequip it summon enemies i should probably have picked a higher level set of enemies like the wyverns in that one hunt or something because there's a good chance that gladio just yeah does that okay so now you can see how much these dodges are doing okay maybe not you got one good example there <laughs> one good example come on don't instantly kill them please i wish we would summon more than one that's the oh no there was two no don't wake up actually oh hey now, now there's more all right you can see it's about half so per dodge it's about half of the charge rate as it is with the accelerator so it pretty much doubles the rate at which the armature accelerates from the things that that actually cause it to generate and only Noctis can equip that one. Noctis is also the only one that can equip the tech turbocharger. So now that we don't have any now that we don't have any of them equipped, let me show you what the normal charge rate for the tech bar is in battle without actions. You know, without any actions. We just want to get into battle and watch the tech bar generate. So that's what the tech bar normally generates at. Let's count out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Oh, I took a little bit of damage there, but you could see. So this is just, you get a good idea that this is the rate at which the tech bar regenerates normally. When we actually go to equip the tech turbocharger, you could see how much faster it is. Like, it's two or three times faster right now, if you're looking at the tech bar just above my head. Hopefully you could see the tech bar well. Yeah, you can. So it's, I personally love the tech turbocharger, especially in my level one runs where I'm trying to abuse things like invincibility frames. Uh, it makes it so that you just get to things like your overwhelms a lot faster. You get to things like your enhancements a lot faster. But uh, that being said, you also can't take away fights where the armager, where you like spamming it, especially something like Max Angelus. They're both really useful. So if you're willing to go into the menu frequently and change out between the two, they could be really strong, but uh, that's a lot to expect out of somebody. Stamina badge just means you can... It, honestly, stamina badge is nothing too crazy. It just means you can run infinitely. If you have the one of the DLC uh, costumes, or if you're just good at you know dashing and you always do the little full stamina regen, this will never matter. The other thing with the stamina, the stamina badge though, is uh, stamina used for actually performing actions in combat. Something like uh, warp hanging, for example. You could warp, uh, you could point warp and hang there forever with a stamina badge. Uh, but those are the items. Uh, I think those might be all of them. Let me just double check the list. Stamina badge, the festive ensemble. There's also the actual, uh, let me see, photos, the photo frames themselves. Let me see if I have the fancy photo frame. How do I actually access the fancy photo frames? I guess is the better question. Share this photo. Sure. Select a special frame. So these are the different frames. These are part of the free holiday pack. But I believe that the... There are a few photo frames that are uh, specific. I believe it's probably this one more than anything. It's very Christmassy. So that's uh, one that comes with the Holiday Pack Plus. And then you have the Festive Ensemble. Again, you can't get the Sombrero outfit until the actual Carnival. And the Carnival Passport itself is, uh, again, they said it's, it's functional. So I just went down the list of everything. And those are all the items you get with the Holiday Pack Plus. I am at Chapter 3. I've already done Crest Home Channels and Baloove Mines in the Level 1 Challenge. So I've been enjoying the Level 1 Challenge of this game. I've definitely been approaching it far more patiently and far more cautiously and with a few interesting strategies in mind to get through some of the tight corridors and tough enemies. But anyway, those are the items. So if you want to go get them, go get them. Try out a Level 1 playthrough. Use some of the new items. Do some more AP farming with some of the new items. And uh, hopefully you're in enjoying Holiday Pack Plus. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for more of the latest Final Fantasy 15 news, guides, videos, all that great stuff. Until next time, everyone.
Take care.